these come up every single year on combined and chemistry paper one or paper two. So make sure you know how to draw reaction profiles for exothermic endothermic reactions. I'm going to show you how to draw them. Even if you think you know how you're doing them, the classic mistake is drawing them correctly and then labeling them incorrectly because the arrows are not where they're supposed to be. You are usually given the axes for these reaction profiles and you've got to draw them for each type of reaction. So the key thing to do first is always do your reactants and your products. So in an exothermic reaction, remember energy is being released into the surroundings, which means that your product is going to end up with less than your reactant. That's the energy of your reactant. Energy of the product will be lower. And then you just draw your curved line to join the two of them together. Okay, for endothermic, obviously energy is taken in from the surroundings. So the energy of your product will be higher than the energy of your reactant. So that's your reactant and that's your product. Obviously, make sure you write them out properly in your exam. And again, just draw in the curve to join the two of them. Your activation energy is always from the reactant to the top of the curve like that. Don't get confused for endo, it's exactly the same from the reactant to the top of the curve. So that is your activation energy there. I'm just going to abbreviate. And the overall energy change is just the difference in energy between the reactant and the product, which would be there in that case and there in that case. I cannot stress, so overall energy change, I cannot stress how important it is to make sure that your arrows are accurate. They cannot be longer or shorter than that distance or you will not get the marks. Do you know these? Comment below.